Leather was very typically used as an upholstery material in arts and crafts and in the green and green style furniture. But the choices of a leather are overwhelming. How do you know that you've chosen the best quality leather for your project? And how do you select the right textures and colors? How do you find the best prices? How do you work with leather in upholstery? I put a lot of time into researching the answers for these questions for our green and green inspired dining room chairs. We're focusing on hairless leathers in this video. Not only are there different types of animal hides, but they also vary by tanning processes, the colors, and their texture. Full grain cow hides are typically chosen for upholstery work. Stay away from the split grain. By definition, pure aniline leather, considered to be the finest of leathers available, has no mars, no pigments, and no defects. But the lack of any stain protection makes it susceptible to both staining and fading. We chose a slightly refined semi-aniline leather. It's considered to be a great choice for upholstery. It's also considered to be a very high quality leather, but there may be some natural scars or variances to the grain. I think it adds just the right amount of character. It's beautifully finished to a very smooth surface. The slight pigmentation added to the leather gives it a little bit more uniform coloration and offers a bit of resistance to staining and fading. There are more shades, colors, and textures to leather than I could have ever possibly have imagined. Even the hides that have been treated the same way can vary a bit in their shading. Think of it like applying stain to wood. Each hide takes up the color a little bit differently. Each hide has its own grain and texture, like fingerprints. It's best if you can pick out the leather in person. For large projects like our set of eight dining room chairs, it's ideal to have all the leather come from one hide, if at all possible. I started out looking online for a leather supplier close to our location. The prices varied wildly, as did the sizes available. Some offered small cut-off squares of leather in neat little stacks. All of them seemed very expensive. I finally settled on Texas Leather Goods. They're located in Carrollton, Texas, just a short trip from the DFW airport. I can't say enough about this amazing place. The staff was helpful and patient with us through the whole process, and it was an unforgettable experience from the moment we walked in their door. They have an unbelievable number of types, tanning processes used, colors, embossings available. Their prices are so reasonable that it paid for the flight there, well, at least compared to trusting an online purchase based off of a digital image for a color match and then paying for shipping on top of it. I definitely go back there again. What we purchased for our chairs was a very large hide, 65 square feet, and it's a full hide, not a half hide. We had no idea how much we'd actually need for our chairs. We wanted to make allowances for errors, had no idea um, how we'd have to cut around holes that sometimes happen in the hides. So we got more than what we needed. Happy we did. We could have gotten by with a smaller hide, but I'd still go with a smaller full hide than for a large half hide, just for the sake of consistency. We practiced with a vinyl covering for our prototype chairs before we cut into the more expensive leather. I do recommend this even though working with leather isn't quite the same as working with the stiff, less forgiving vinyl. Once you've got your leather hide, it's important to understand that the more durable leather is at the butt end of the hide and along the back ridge. And closer to the belly and at the outer edges, the leather has a lot more stretch. The stretch to the overall hide is also going to be, in general, from side to side, the same way that your stomach will stretch after a big Thanksgiving meal. My layout takes this into account with less stretch from the front to the back of the chair so it'll wear better over time. 
The texture of the leather will also vary, being much more supple in the neck and belly areas with a looser texture than in the butt and high back areas. I worked from the back end of the hide towards the front, staying with that stiffer, firmer leather and kept away from the sides and neck as much as possible. I used the seat frames to plan my layout on the hide, giving an allowance of four inches all around each frame. And then I drew the cutout shapes on the leather in chalk. Chalk wipes off without damaging the leather and it enables me to do a final check for any flaws or brands or major scarring on each piece that you would want to avoid. It also takes a good shears to cut leather, but once your cut is started, it goes pretty quickly. You can just zip the scissors or your shears right along the line that you want to cut. The leather is laid face down and the covered slip seat is positioned on top of it. And I'm gonna be using the pneumatic nailer stapler this time because when I put the staples in, I was already having a hard enough time going through the fabric because the extra cushioning takes away some of the ability to staple into the uh, piece of work. As with the muslin, attack the center and the back first, but always pull the leather as tightly as possible. Remember, it's got a lot of stretch. It's going to stretch over time and with use. So you want to get as much of that slack out of the leather as possible to start with. The rest of the leather, sides and in front in an alternating pattern, are tacked down like the muslin liner. I use the bone folders that I made in our video, Making Essential Upholstery Tools, to aid in forming the leather folds and to help it lay flat before tacking it into place on the slip seat. We don't want to actually crease the leather hard on the front side, we just want it to get to lie flat. On the stapled side, the creaser will help the leather to lie as it should for stapling and strong even pressure is needed in the folds of the leather on the back side. Use either the curved creaser or the straight one, depending on how the leather is reacting to being neatly tucked underneath. To tack around the corner, I take advantage of the stretch of the leather around that inside corner cut out of the legs. Find the center of the leather ear and pull firmly and evenly and then place a single tack inside the apex of the corner. Cut the leather diagonally across the corner to reduce the bulk and simplify cleaning up the folds. Work the leather to produce a neat fold just to the inside of the corner and tuck the excess leather under each of the sides using one of the creasers. Fold just to the edge of the seat frame. The pointed folder assists in getting the leather to fold where you want it to towards the inside of the exposed corners. The triple fold of the leather on the edge will fill in the gaps at the corners of the frame and the leg. Tack the remainder of the edges down, continuing to stretch that leather tightly and avoid any lumpy bulk. Trim the extra overlapping leather at the corner apex. Three layers of leather is the most you should have at any location. Remember, the corners will be attached to the chair's corner braces. The back side of the corners should be as neat as possible. On the outside, the leather will form a neat fold on either side of the corner. The cambric dust cover adds the final touch. It'll keep domestic animal hairs and other contaminants away from the padding of the chair and prevent fraying on the fabric coverings. It's cut about an inch larger than the chair frame and attached in the same manner as the burlap layer. On the corners, I made a tidy angle across the cutouts for the legs. The slip seats will be attached to the chairs after the finish work is complete. This process makes a professionally covered slip seat that looks great, feels great, enhances your chairs, and strengthens the chair joinery. I hope you found this series on upholstery to be helpful. Please click like below and share it with others. Even better, subscribe and hit the bell. Your comments are always welcome below.